Hello everyone, welcome to Backyard Health and Healing, where you gain understanding, not just information. I felt compelled to do this video after I saw this article online about the high prevalence of diabetes in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The prevalence of diabetes is increasing around the world, and most people have no clue as to why it's happening in their own countries. In this episode, I hope to increase your understanding of how changes in cultural behaviors you think of for the best can cause a disease to go out of control. I hope to do so by unmasking the puppet master that people in the Virgin Islands likely don't know is driving their frequency of diabetes higher and higher. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Eugene Tall. I'm a doctor of public health. Thank you for supporting my channel. Nearly 25 years ago, I reported results from a study I conducted in the U.S. Virgin Islands, which showed that the frequency of diabetes among adults aged 20 and older was already at 16%. In this study, I was able to identify a factor that is the driving force behind the increase in diabetes prevalence in these islands. To provide the context under which this hidden factor works to increase diabetes prevalence, I have returned to this street in Christiansted Town where I grew up as a child. In the environment in which I grew up, the prevalence of diabetes was significantly lower. Researchers of today would say we lived in an area that was characterized by residential green space. Residential green space is defined in various ways in different countries. However, no matter how it is defined, residential green space is associated with a lower risk of getting diabetes. Therefore, it's not surprising that diabetes frequency was lower when more people lived with residential green space. Our residential green space included a backyard where we could socialize, recreate, grow food, and raise chickens. These all contributed to what I call a backyard lifestyle and people who experience this backyard lifestyle engage in regular physical activity, got regular sun exposure, and regularly consumed unprocessed foods that prevented obesity and diabetes. So, over time, as more people began living in apartments and new homes surrounded by grass and palm trees, fewer and fewer people were living this backyard lifestyle. Without the protections of this backyard lifestyle, people became more sedentary, more overweight, and more vitamin D deficient. These factors helped to increase the frequency of diabetes in the population. At this point, you may be thinking that the shift away from a backyard lifestyle is the factor that has driven the rates of type 2 diabetes in the Virgin Islands upwards. But there's another hidden factor that has influenced the shift, and it's called Acculturation. Acculturation is the adoption of the values and customs belonging to one group of people by another group. In the U.S. Virgin Islands, acculturation of Caribbean-born people to U.S. mainland values and practices is the driving force behind the lifestyle and built environment changes that have led to the increase in type 2 diabetes. And how do I know that? because I conducted a study to develop a way to measure acculturation in the U.S. Virgin Islands and found that acculturation was significantly and positively related to body size and blood sugar. The research also found that acculturation was positively associated with fast food restaurant use and eating at a fast food restaurant two or more times per week was associated with insulin resistance, a precursor for diabetes. So, in summary, we understand that increases in the frequency of diabetes in a community may be the result of changes in what people value, like where to live and what to eat. Getting people to place a higher value on past behaviors that protected them may be one approach for reducing the prevalence of diabetes over time. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.